This is really two videos in one, and I'll put a timestamp down there. First, we're going to turn a no tan into color, and then we're going to enhance the color of the portrait. So let's get started. This is sort of two videos in one, and I'm going to put the um, timestamps below. I hope I can do that correctly, so that if you just want to see how to make this portrait darker, uh, that's what the last part of the video is, which is about, I don't know, maybe it's two minutes or something. But first, I just wanted to show how I'm going to use the no-tan program. I put in a no-tan, which was just the black and the white. Now I've dialed in, this is an app, by the way, it only costs about $4. And now I put in I have black, white, and gray. I'm looking for balance. I'm looking for, do I see an established pattern? If I had put my photograph in and then turned on the no tanizer and had it look all white or all black, then I know I'm, I'm just not going to be able to get a good portrait um, or, or image of anything. I, I first need my photograph to pass what I kind of think of as the no tan test. Do I have a balance of shapes? Do I have a balance of lights against darks? Can, am I making some recognizable, do those shapes make re a recognizable object? And I don't always have to use the NOTAN, I, NOTAN program, I, I often don't, and I have a photograph right next to me. But it kind of informs me, and I want to do some study before I actually start to paint, so I can be really strategic. So these are just different shots of what I was playing with, making things a little uh, darker, making things a little lighter because I want, I want to be really informed about where those shapes are before I start painting. But like I said, I use the photograph, which is right next to me as well, because that's that I need both pieces of information. I don't think I could paint with one or, or the other. Here is what I'm calling the final piece, although like I said, this is two videos in one, and so at the end I'm going to make this a darker, I'm going to increase the value range from lightest lights to darkest darks at the very end of this video. But I wanted to show, and the purpose of this first part of this video, is how to turn a value or a no tan, just black and white and gray, into color. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about. And that's what I've been doing with um, portraits for a while now. And so in a sense, color is going to become somewhat irrelevant. I'm going to use, I'm going to mix up all, a lot of different colors, and um, some are going to be dark, some are going to be lighter, and I'm going to insert those colors into places where I see those value shapes. I'm going to put cooler colors on the side of the face that is further away from the window, and try to put warmer colors on the side of the face that's closer to the window. And we're, like I said, you're going to see this lightened up, I mean darkened down at the end of this video. But I wanted to just kind of look at some other portraits that I've been doing that kind of show, oh, and there's the, um, the photograph right nearby, so you can see the reference photo. Got to have the reference photo. Um, so let's, so this is, these are almost normal looking skin colors here, but in order to get here, I had to do some experience, experiments with, um, with value. So here's a picture of my sister-in-law and you can very clearly say, see that these are probably not colors that would belong on a face, but I'm experimenting with how much can I insert a color value swap out and still have it read as being a face. And so um, I'm putting in my darkest darks here, and then the midtones go in. And again, trying to pump as much color as I can into what are usually considered flesh tones. So um, let's see, the side of her face that would have been cooler has some of those greens, and the side of her face that was closer to the sun has some warmer colors, and I think that's the final piece. So this looks a little, you know, it's, um, it's, it's definitely not where I've been before because I'm just trying, I'm just taking my brain and saying don't think about it being a person, just think about it being an object and insert value wherever you see it and try to keep your color clean. And so that's what I tried to do here. So the value pattern will follow exactly what I saw on the photograph or on the NOTAN program, but what I'm going to do is insert colors that are kind of, I guess you would consider them weird to be on a face. And here's another one which is a little bit more normal in terms of color when it comes to um, flesh. And there's the, you can see the photograph right nearby, I just want you to see that. But there's green in there, and there's 
purple. And, I mean, there, there's a lot of color going on there. The whole point is how much color can I put into a face? There's that green showing up again, which I, I kind of enjoy because it's cool and because, you know, I'm painting mostly Caucasian people here. And so usually faces are very, have a lot of red in them. And so inserting green and blue kind of will give a little bit more depth. This is my wonderful brother-in-law. Oh, I adore him so much. And I was pretty happy with, you can see really clearly there where there are warmer and colors on the lighter side of the face and where it gets cooler on the darker side of the face. So I'm aware of that. So the two things to be aware of both value how light and dark something is and also how warm or cool something is. Here's another example of where the cool side of the face has those violets and green and then the warm side of the face, which was closer to the sun, doesn't have those in them. I'm trying to use as few strokes as possible because that's kind of a thing I like to do. And um, here's a more normal, this is not the exact photograph, but you can get a pretty good idea of what the lighting was like. Um, I, I couldn't find the source photograph because I got disorganized, but there's more normalized color there. Now we're going to go into um, what happened, the second part of the video, which I will timestamp. Let me write that down. It says 1220, that's 6, uh, 620, 626, yeah. And um, so this was the final portrait taken from um, the Notan, Notan. And I was looking at my value finder, and you can see it almost all falls on the left-hand side of the value finder. See that? Wow, almost exactly. And that's just not enough. It's just not enough of a value range. So I'm going to go in and I'm not going to change any decisions that I made in terms of lights and darks and midtones, but I'm going to enhance those decisions and I'll come out with a stronger painting at the end. And I'm going to put the, I'm going to insert the photo of this painting as I'm working on it above so you'll be able to see the difference. So I'm mixing up some colors and also at this point I'm only looking at the photograph. There we go. There's the there's what it looks like before I get started on making things darker, and then we'll compare that at the end of this and see what shifted. I, I was pretty happy with this, but um, last um, yes last yesterday, <laughs> but but this morning I felt like oh gosh, it looks it looks kind of like I said, it doesn't have the value range that I wanted to have, and and if it doesn't have the strong value range, it, it, the the overall painting just doesn't have enough oomph for me. And then I don't feel like I've really succeeded. So I, I just felt compelled to go in and, and do that. And I decided, well, why not stick that at the end of this video as well? I haven't been doing a lot of videos. And so I thought um, I could have made this a separate video. But why do that when I can timestamp the thing? So I'm um, carefully looking at where I had made previous decisions and then going in and shifting things. I've decided to speed things up because um, I, I find watching people paint is a little bit like watching paint dry. Um, so let's go a little faster. So you can see I'm putting some, I guess you call them glazes or another layer, putting in some cerulean on the darker side of the face. Because like I said, that's going to be cooler and trying to keep the warm, the warm side of the face as warm as I can. So we'll continue. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I said it before, but you can see an insert of my uh, of where I started. You can see the portrait there and what I'm going to do to it to make it darker. Just enhancing those relationships that I already established. But trying to use some unexpected colors, going in with some greens and cerulean blue on the side of the face that's away from the sun and trying to stay warm on the side that is closer to the sun. And I do think that it is an improvement. So we'll take a look at that in about one second. Yeah, so here we are. It's going to be considerably different, or at least to my eye, it's different. And I really recommend waiting until the next day and taking a look and then go back in with any final adjustments. There we go. It's just a little bit more present. And so uh, I stand by this one. I always say that when I have a piece and I can kind of stand by. So, but I wanted to show how the NOTAN program works. I hope that makes some sense. If it doesn't, let me know, and I'll see if I can break it down some more. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.